What is that everybody? It is your main course a little back cake? Welcome back to another video. Today we are going to learn about two things that I personally have never heard of. I don't know what I don't know how this is gonna go. This could go great, could go horribly. We're gonna learn, we're gonna find out, and we're gonna use the knowledge that we obtain to make conversations awkward. Yes we are. We are there. We go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Today on the roster, we have a dandelion coffee and digitaria insularis. Now, both of these, I don't know what they are. I didn't know what to do for today's video. I didn't know what to learn about, so I just started looking things up on Wikipedia, and I ended up here. Don't ask me how I got here. This is where we ended up. So yeah, let's learn about <clears throat> dandelion coffee. That's a picture of it, I guess interesting pictures here not a very long article that's why i chose another one this may be a hot take i know this is a hot take i don't like coffee at all it's just not good just it's bitter and if you add all of that other stuff in there to make it not bitter you might as well not drink coffee you know it completely defeats the purpose of coffee so i don't like coffee it smells great don't get me wrong it smells great but tastes like crap now that we got that over with let's read dandelion coffee also dandelion tea i do like tea you know, i might like me some dandelion tea is a tisane herbal tea also known as herbal infusion okay made from the root of the dandelion plant the roasted dandelion root pieces and the beverage have some resemblance to coffee in appearance and taste so it is a tea but it tastes like coffee. Great. And it is thus commonly considered a coffee substitute. Dandelion root is used for both medicinal and culinary purposes and is thought to be a detoxifying herb. I do love being detoxified. History. The usage of the dandelion plant dates back to the ancient Egyptians, Greeks, and Romans. Additionally, for over a thousand years, Chinese traditional medicine has been known to incorporate the plant. You can grow a dandelion legitimately anywhere. The dandelions are what you see on the sidewalks, busting through the cracks, and whatnot. Susanna Moody explained how to prepare dandelion coffee in her memoir of living in Canada, Roughing It in the Bush, 1852. You know, Canada was that difficult to live in where she mentions that she had heard of it from an article published in the 1830s in New York Albion by a certain Dr. Harrison. Dandelion coffee was later mentioned in a Harper's News Monthly magazine story in 1886. In 1919, dandelion root was noted as a source of cheap coffee. It has also been a part of edible plant classes dating back to, uh, at least to the 1970s. I had known that you can eat dandelion uh, leaves, and I had knew you could make dandelion wine. I had heard about that before. So I guess it makes sense that you can make a tea out of it, you know? I mean, I guess that does make sense. Harvesting. Do they have a, like a great harvest dandelion root? I could go out in my yard and probably harvest 10 pounds of it right now. Harvesting dandelion roots requires differentiating true dandelions from other yellow daisy-like flowers such as cat's ear and a hawk's beard. True dandelions have a ground level rosette of deep toothed leaves and hollow straw-like stems. Large plants that are three to four years old with tap roots approximately half inch in diameter are harvested for dandelion coffee. These tap roots are similar in appearance to pale carrots. That's what this is right here pale carrot. These don't look that much like dandelions, to be honest. Like that one kind of, but it doesn't have the, the same leaves at all. Me, as a nature expert, would never get them confused and actually eat one and it end up being poisonous and I die. That wouldn't happen. Preparation. The dandelion plant must be two years old before removing the root. After harvesting, the dandelion roots are dried, chopped, and roasted. After harvesting, the dandelion roots are sliced lengthwise and placed to dry for two weeks in a warm area. When ready, the dry roots are oven roasted and stored away. 
To prepare a cup, one will steep about one teaspoon of the root in hot water for around 10 minutes. People often enjoy their dandelion coffee with cream and sugar. I wonder if it has caffeine in it. I, I wouldn't think that it would, but it might. I mean, if you're talking about it as a cheap coffee substitute, people don't drink coffee for the taste, usually. Mm -hmm. Health claims and uses. Although popular in alternative health circles, there is no empirical evidence that dandelion root or its extracts can treat any medical condition. In addition, very few high-quality clinical trials have been performed to investigate its effects. Health risks, health risks associated with dandelion root are uncommon. However, directly consuming the plant by mouth could lead to stomach discomfort, heartburn, allergic reactions, or diarrhea. You'd be allergic to dandelions. That would suck. That being, like, the worst outcome kind of makes me want to go out in my yard and, like, just dig up a dandelion root and take a bite out of it. Probably not going to, but there is a slight urge. Research. Dandelion root has been linked to a possible treatment for cancer. What? A 2016 study results suggest that colon cancer cells' metabolic activity can be reduced with doses of dandelion root extract. Research points towards a potential decrease in colon tumors with a scheduled and consistent dose of dandelion root extract. In a November 30th, 2017 interview, Caroline Hamm, the oncologist running the study, shared her concerns regarding premature internet hype about these studies. She specifically expressed alarm over individuals contacting her who wanted to abandon standard care. Now that's a bold move. That is a bold move. You say, all right, the doctor told me I had a 70% chance of getting out of this with this care. Or I could eat some dandelion roots and maybe do all right. I'm going for that one. This is a quote from Caroline Ham. It's horrible if someone were to believe this and not take standard of care. And I get emails every week from people around the world thinking they want to stop their standard medicine and take dandelion tea instead because of these really unfounded claims. They can die if they do that. Chemistry, is, this is just what's in the dandelion tea. Wait, I wonder if there's caffeine. I don't know what most of these things are. Amino acids, that's nice. Pectin, caffeic acid, that sounds close to caffeine. It doesn't look like there's straight caffeine in it. Interesting, that's really cool. There's a lot, there's kind of a lot to that. A little history about it, a harvesting method, cancer research. I like saying research like a British person. So basically next time I see someone who's drinking coffee, I'm going to ask them if it's dandelion coffee, and they're going to be like, what? No? What's that? And then I'm going to go into a five-minute monologue about dandelion coffee. Time well spent. Now, let's real quick go to Digitaria insularis. This is a type of crabgrass. You may know what that is. You may not. Digitaria is the genus for crabgrass. Crabgrass is basically just a... It's not really a weed, it's a grass, but it's really common everywhere, kind of, you know? So, this is just a little little blurb about sour grass is the common name of this, and truly, only reason I'm interested in this is because I want to know how it got its name. Who tasted this and was like, that's sour. I've got the perfect name. Digitaria insularis is a species of grass commonly known as sour grass. It is native to Central and South America and the southern parts of the United States and has been introduced into other parts of the world. It was first described by the German botanist Frederick Karl Gorg Fede in 1904. Taria insularis is a tufted perennial bunch grass with very short swollen rhizomes. Oh, it's not very nice to talk about their rhizomes like that. How would you like it if I called you short and swollen? The stems reach a height of, of 80 to 130 centimeters and are erect. Branched from the lower and middle nodes, swollen bases, and woolly bracts, glabrous internodes and nodes. Goodness. Sheets papillos dash pillows in the majority. What is this? What does any of this mean? 
Ligule, 4 to 6 millimeters long. Blades, linear, 20 to 50 centimeters long and 20, 10 to 20 millimeters wide. Inflorescence, 20 to 35 centimeters long. Numerous clusters, 10 to 15 centimeters long. Solitary, triquestrous, ratchets of clusters, 0.4 to 0.7 millimeters wide. Scabrous, spikelets, lancelot. 4.2 to 4.6 millimeters long, paired caudate, densely covered with trichomes, up to 6 millimeters long, brown or whitish ranging up to 5 millimeters from the apex of the spikelet, lower gloom, triangular to ovate, to 0. 0.6 millimeters long, inner vate membrane is upper gloom, 3.5 to 4.5 millimeters long, acute 3.5 nerved, ciliated, inferior lemma as long as spikelet, acuminate, 7 nerved, covered with silky hairs, upper lemma, 3.2 to 3.6 millimeters long, acuminate, dark brown, anthers, 1 to 1.2 millimeters long. What? I don't know what any of that means. I'm confused, slightly scared. Distribution and habitat. We may understand this. Digitaris insularis is native to the tropical and sub-Saharan Americas. S tropical and subtropical. What did what? Where did sub-Saharan come from, brother? It is a common species found in disturbed areas and on beaches at an altitude of up to 1,400 meters. Holy crap. 4,593 feet above sea level. In its native Brazil, Paraguay, Bolivia, and Venezuela, it is a pervasive weed out of its natural habitats. It has been introduced in tropical Asia and some Pacific islands and elsewhere, and some countries into which it has been introduced, such as Hawaii and Papua New Guinea, it is considered an invasive species. Oh, poor guy got labeled. And that's going to be it for today's video, ladies and gentlemen. Dandelion coffee and sour grass. A good variety, I must say, on this channel. Wouldn't you? Smash like, subscribe, enjoy your life. It is, it is limited. There is no need for excess anger, sadness, and pain. Be happy. Thank, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you did enjoy this. Uh, tell your friends about dandelion coffee. Tell your family about sour grass. I don't know what. We didn't really learn anything about sour grass. I'm slightly disappointed in the sour grass Wikipedia. But it, it is what it is. Have an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Make someone else's day better if you can. And I will see all of y'all later.